Thank you, Dominic, for that warm introduction. And uh, it's a great pleasure to be here. Thank you, everybody, for attending. So um, my uh, focus in this uh, lecture is on uh, depression and MDMA-assisted therapy. And as you all know, probably uh, the Multidisciplinary Association for Psychedelic Studies um, has over the past uh, years uh, conducted several studies investigating uh, MDMA-assisted therapy for PTSD, or post-traumatic stress disorder. And um, uh, we have uh, been so fortunate that we have been a study site for the first uh, European uh, Phase two trial uh, here in, uh, in Moss in Norway. And um, over the past three years, we also have been collaborating with MAPS to set up a study for depression. And we haven't started yet, but it seems likely that we will uh, start recruitment pretty soon. So I will just start off with my conflicts of interest. I have received honoraria from Lundbeck and I've been a therapist in a MAPS sponsored trial and also uh, we will be receiving free MDMA from MAPS to our depression study. So um, MDD or major depressive disorder is a very common disease. It's uh, affecting a lot of people and we have effective treatments. Um, we have psychotherapy and we also have antidepressants that work quite well, for some people at least, but there are a significant number of people that don't get any effect. And um, the effect sizes in uh, well-controlled studies are only small to moderate. So uh, we need uh, new treatment options and it would be a very interesting principle if we could treat a, a condition like PTSD or depression with um, just a few doses with therapy uh, in comparison to, to the daily administration of antidepressant medicine and, um, and their associated side effects. So uh, MDMA is um, a monoamine releaser. It means that um, a lot of serotonin, which is a neurotransmitter, is being released into the synaptic cleft. Um, and it also has some effect on norepinephrine and dopamine, as well as a few hormones like vasopressin and oxytocin. And oxytocin is interesting in this context because uh, it has been associated with... Uh, um, the establishment of, uh, of uh, an attachment and it's being secreted during breastfeeding um, to, to help establishing a bond between mother and infant. And in this study, uh, it was shown in nature that a, a single dose of MDMA helped reopen a critical period in mice. And mice, as well as humans, have uh, like critical periods where we are very sensitive to social cues or social stimuli. And uh, during uh, adolescence uh, and, and after uh, such a critical period, we are not so sensitive anymore. MDMA seems to uh, open uh, such a critical period. So uh, just a brief summary of the um, six phase two trials. Um, and we have seen uh, large effect sizes. We have seen significant reduction of PTSD symptoms, both statistically and clinically. Um, and we also have seen that the effect is durable. And not only that, but it also increases uh, from study termination up until the, lo um, the um, long-term follow-up one year after. So in the phase two depression, uh, or the, in the phase two studies, we have seen um, immediate and, uh, and significant uh, antidepressant effect. Um, but um, it was only in the two, two of the studies and the pooled analysis of, of the six phase two uh, data combined uh, only showed a trend towards significance. And then we got the phase three data one year ago and then this is uh, uh, a study that was uh, conducted um, by the gold standard with uh, randomized controlled, uh, placebo controlled design. 
90 patients uh, that were randomized to either MDMA or placebo, and they all got the same uh, therapy. And we saw a significant and robust reduction of PTSD symptoms, as well as a, a reduction, reduction of functional impairment as compared to the placebo group. Um, and uh, the treatment was well tolerated and safe. It was two uh, and, uh, severe adverse events, both in the placebo group. Uh, and there were no uh, adverse events, or at least uh, no um, higher degree of or adverse events in the MDMA group relating to suicidality, abuse potential, or cardiac events. So this is uh, the, the primary outcome, which is the uh, CAP score. That is uh, the gold standard uh, measure for PTSD symptom severity. And we see that after three um, sessions, there is a, um, uh, uh, yeah, it's a large effect between uh, the, the placebo and the MDMA group. Both of the groups um, had quite a good effect uh, because there is a lot of uh, psychotherapy in this trial, uh, but MDMA was um, um, significantly better than placebo. Uh, and in the phase three study, we also saw uh, significant and, uh, um, and a moderate effect size uh, in terms of the depression scores. Uh, and that is promising for our uh, study that we'll explore uh, the, the um, antidepressant effect in uh, depressed patients. So uh, the rationale for uh, an MDMA-assisted therapy study for depression is that we have seen that uh, in the PTSD trials, we have, um, uh, we have seen that uh, MDMA-assisted therapy or MDMA could facilitate uh, 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 deep and transformative psychotherapy and we, we hope and hypothesize that, uh, that the MDMA could also facilitate uh, a similar deep and transformative psychotherapeutic process in depressed patients. And we have seen that MDMA uh, reduces anxiety without any emotional numbing, and it increases interpersonal trust and self-compassion and also it brings uh, emotional uh, material to the surface and memories to the surface that could be analyzed and processed um, in a way that uh, it is usually uh, very hard to achieve uh, without the medicine. So uh, we hope that in the depression study that uh, participants can explore and, and also process um, painful life experiences, uh, interpersonal conflicts, uh, and uh, maladaptive coping strategies, for instance. Um, and that, that would be interesting to see. But rationale for, um, for a depression study, we have some case reports from the 1970s and uh, the 80s that uh, show um, uh, therapeutic benefits in a variety of diseases. Um, um, and uh, some of the case reports also described uh, depressed patients and, and a therapeutic outcome. Um, although there were no uh, clinical trials at that time before, the, uh, before MDMA was scheduled. Uh, we also have a qualitative study that um, uh, showed that the effects of MDMA-assisted therapy uh, is not uh, uh, not only on PTSD symptoms alone, but also can go beyond uh, the, the PTSD symptoms. Um, and um, we, we saw that one year after a completion of a phase two trial for PTSD, um, participants reported uh, more self-awareness, better uh, relationships, less substance use, and were more open to ongoing or continued therapy. We also see in, um, a great deal of overlap between depression and PTSD. A lot of uh, childhood trauma develop into uh, depression in adulthood. So we might see that the effect we have seen in the PTSD trials may also be applied to depression. Um, 
at least in the subset of depressed patients with a traumatic background. And we also have seen um, effects on personality traits um, that um, usually by, uh, by the use of, of conventional therapy, that those personality traits are very hard, uh, not so easily malleable, but, uh, but we have data that support um, uh, effects on personality traits, such as neuroticism, which is a well-known risk factor for depression. So um, this is an overview of the Norwegian uh, trial. Um, we, since this is the first study uh, on depression, I think it's justified to, to use an open-label uh, approach. That means everyone will get MDMA. There are no control group with the placebo. Um, we will include uh, adults with at least moderate depression uh, with 3 to 24 months of duration. And they will get uh, two dosing days, which is six to eight hours of therapy with, uh, with MDMA. Um, and they also will get a lot of psychotherapy, both preparatory in, uh, to to prepare them for the effects of the medicine and also, maybe more importantly, uh, establish a, a safe and, and therapeutic alliance with, with the therapists. Uh, so, and the um, uh, therapy during the, um, uh, the, the dosing days is in their directive. It's not um, something that uh, the therapist will... Um, yeah, it, it's very participant-oriented, and it will uh, be supportive and uh, and uh, support the exploration and expression of emotions and memories. And the therapist will will be there as supporters and will not be um, those who direct the therapy in a particular direction. And after each of the two uh, dosing days, we will have also integrative uh, psychotherapy, which is. Uh, and the goal of the integrative psychotherapy is to, um, to apply any new insights or perspectives from the therapy into daily life and to sort of try to invite the participant to, to continue the exploration uh, and, um, uh, of emotions and memories. And, and we, we have seen, we have now experience from, from the European PTSD study, and we have seen that... Uh, that that the treatment isn't over when the participant goes out of the office after the last MDMA session. It's a very continuing therapy, and, and um, the process can continue to unfold, and it can come in, in waves, and, it, and we typically uh, encourage the participant to, to continue to explore and, and, and uh, not avoid anything that comes up and try to be open and continue um, uh, in almost the same manner as during the, the MDMA therapy, if possible. So our depression study is um, investigator-initiated. We have a collaboration with MAPS, as I mentioned. Um, they have provided a lot of scientific uh, support during protocol development and uh, and they also will be providing MDMA, as I mentioned. Um, the, the study is, is funded by the government, um, which is quite unusual, I, I guess. Um, and uh, it will be uh, my PhD uh, project. Um, we will have pharmaceutical grade uh, MDMA. Um, it's nothing, some, not something that we will um, by from the streets, uh, it's um, it's pure, and so we hope that we could start recruitment uh, this spring. It seems likely. Uh, we just need uh, to um, have the, the last few um, approvals that are still pending. We have initial approval from from the ethics committee. We have sent an amendment. Uh, and this uh, needs review, but we expect to start recruitment quite soon. So uh, the primary outcome is MODERS. It's a very commonly used uh, uh, depression score. It's very sensitive to change in depression 
symptoms, and we have uh, Sheehan disability scale as the secondary outcome, and uh, we use Columbia for suicidality, as well as a lot of exploratory measures, uh, such as uh, alcohol use, substance use, self-report depression, um, yeah, insomnia, quality of life, anxiety, PTSD, and so on. Um, we will use the same therapeutic approach as in the PTSD trials, uh, which is inner directive, as I mentioned. Um, we will provide support and build trust, with great emphasis on uh, building a, a, a therapeutic alliance. Uh, and during the MDMA dosing sessions, we will be actively and empathically listening and um, encourage exploration um, and um, yeah, and the expression of uh, of thoughts, emotions, and uh, and um, memories. Um, this is our team. We have great support from Ingmar, Ingmar Klausen, who is present here, uh, and the hospital leaders. We have support from Professor Ola Andreasen at the Norman Center of Excellence. We have um, uh, a full team that have, um, has now experience from from the. MP18 trial, which is a MAP-sponsored PTSD trial. Um, and we have now uh, experience from recruiting and also treating participants. Um, so we have now um, uh, four certified MDMA therapists. And um, uh, yeah, this is our treatment room. Um, uh, it's... Uh, so at, at the hospital, uh, we will provide overnight stay for the participant um, after each of the MDMA sessions. We will uh, encourage the use of eye shades and music to, to have an inner experience. And um, we will sit uh, uh, ready to, to support the participant any way we can during the experience. So that concludes my presentation. Um, uh, I appreciate that I had the opportunity to present you and uh, thank you for your time and attention. Thank you.